It is extremely important to me that the stories we share are authentic and that we strive to tell both perspectives. I've been a local to this remarkable island three times and a tourist too many times to count. Our home year holiday celebrates Aruba. There's a reason why Arubans are so patriotic and there's a reason why visitors keep coming back. Let's dive into the elements that makes Aruba our home and the perfect holiday. We do have a system of proportionate representation. Mm -hmm. I think what is most important to know is that we have a parliamentary system in Aruba. Mm -hmm. The most important rule in this parliamentary system, the Council of Ministers, so the government has to have the faith of parliament. So it is a very strong competence, uh, power of parliament to say, government, you need to go, of course. And on the other hand, the government has the power to dissolve parliament. So we have checks and balances. So nobody or no actor, no organ within the state can be able to obtain all power. Now that is Aruba's electoral system in a nutshell. December 6, 2024 is election day here on the island and the people of Aruba will be heading to the polls to cast their vote. So let's get familiar with the electoral framework of Aruba. This one has a lot of legislation uh, in it. So for example, the Hannah Meyer is with the University of Aruba. She's a lecturer and a researcher of constitutional law. The parliamentary system implemented within the constitution follows very closely to the Dutch parliamentary system. She gives us a brief overview of Aruba's governance structure. Uh, we have a parliament and a government that consists of a council of ministers. Um, and we don't have a president like you would have in a presidential system. So we do have a prime minister, uh, but basically we say the prime minister is the first among equals, so within the council of ministers. Every vote counts. You've heard this before. And in Aruba, this is really the case because of how the seats in parliament are structured. We do have a system of proportionate representation, which means that um, well, we do have voting districts, but that doesn't matter that much. You don't need to obtain a majority within the district to get a seat in parliament. But it goes according to these lists. Um, uh, so all of the districts will be taken together, so to say. Um, and this ensures that also minorities have a greater chance of actually obtaining a seat or, or a person they like will actually be voted into uh, parliament. Hannah gives us a quick breakdown on votes directly impacting seats in parliament. Total amount of people that voted, um, this number will be divided by the 21 seats of parliament. So for example, we would have 2100 votes casted. Um, if we divide this uh, through 21, we'll have 100 votes, which means that um, someone on the list or the list that has been put together by a political party needs to obtain at least 100 votes to get a seat in parliament. So, for example, if a political party obtained 300 votes, they get three seats allocated in parliament. Hannah explains why this electoral system of proportional representation works well for a small island nation such as Aruba. She's been studying constitutional law for many years and in her expertise, having a balanced system works very well. Well, I think especially on a small island, if you would go for a, a majority system, it is uh, very easy for um, one political party to take all power, which I think is not um, 
always a good idea in general that one political party has all the power and there, there's no counter uh, to it um, because we do have a dual uh, system where uh, you, you cannot be in the government and in the parliament, the Staten, at the same time. But the Staten, the parliament, really has the task um, to control what government is doing. But basically, because political parties have such a huge influence on this uh, electoral system in practice, it means that when one political party would take up almost all of the seats in the Staten, how effective would they be in controlling the government? I think if you have a, a system of proportional representation where you have a uh, higher chance of people from different political parties being into the Staten, uh, the way you can actually effectively control and supervise uh, the government is easier. For over 70 years, Park Boss was a symbol of neglect, hidden away near the mangroves, far enough from Orangistad to keep the thick smoke of burning waste out of sight. But the damage it caused to our environment, to our health, and to our image was undeniable. Parkizenbos was in crisis. But now, two years later, under the orders of Minister of Nature Ursula Adens, that chapter is behind us. The fire and the suffocating smoke? Gone. The burning hill that once greeted our guests has been extinguished. No longer will our island's skyline be tarnished by plumes of black smoke. This is only the first step but it's a giant leap forward. Our air is cleaner, our health is safer, and the eyesore that was Barquithenbos is being transformed. With the fires extinguished, work was immediately set out on transforming the land itself. The land is being rehabilitated, a project that continues with full force, but the difference is already visible. Barquithenbos is no longer a toxic wasteland. It's becoming a workable parcel of land for future development. A new wall is also now being constructed to enclose the old landfill. It sends a message that uncontrolled dumping is no longer acceptable. The landfill is permanently closed, with the site now being secured and reclaimed for better use. Illegal dumping has always been a problem in Aruba, but it was expected to worsen as a side effect of closing Barquitnabos. Closing the landfill was the right step for the environment, and now illegal dumping is being addressed separately. While these activities have not been fully stopped, the expansion of the Bureau of City Inspector and the investment in technology have been important steps in addressing the issue. The next step is to use this data to track down and stop those involved in illegal dumping. One of the most dangerous elements at Barquitenbos was the presence of old rusting containers filled with asbestos. This toxic material posed a grave threat to anyone who came near. This was acted upon quickly, closing the site and engaging international experts to deal with it. The asbestos sanitation process is underway and the risk is being eliminated. Though the towering flames are gone, fires still smolder deep underground. These fires have been mapped out using advanced technology and a development of a plan to extinguish them once and for all continues to be in process. Also being addressed is a critical threat to the coastline. The steep slope of garbage that stretches along the shoreline is unstable and without action it risks collapsing into the sea. Plans for reprofiling the slope are in motion, ensuring our coastline remains protected and our environment safeguarded. Restoring nature is key to the future of Barquitenbos. The mangroves that once thrived here were decimated by decades of fire and pollution. Now, they are receiving the attention they deserve. Under the stewardship of the Aruba Conservation Foundation, these ecosystems are being nurtured back to health with plans to plant new mangroves to strengthen our natural barriers. Here are some sample drawings of what the Ministry of Nature is working towards for Parkitambas to become. Within two years, the reclaimed land will be ready for new life. It won't be suitable for human use, but it's perfect for renewable energy. This land will host solar panels such as these, contributing to our island's sustainable future. 
on an incredibly positive development. There's been sightings of the return of nature in Barquitambas. Aruba's beloved birds, such as the Pukichis and Loras, have been spotted in the area recently. Additionally, Loras have started to spend the night at Barquitambas. These are massive winds of migration behavior in nature. This December marks two years without smoke billowing over Barquitambas. It's a significant milestone, but just the beginning. Every challenge is being tackled in sequence by the Minister of Nature, Ursula Adens, along with stakeholders. The work is far from over, but the change is undeniable. Barquitambas is no longer a symbol of neglect, it's a symbol of progress. Recently, I celebrated a birthday and I wanted to share it with you guys on Tel Aruba. Come with me to put together these custom party favors. They are beach themed since we're going to De Palm Island and there's other really useful items also for a day of celebrating. To start off, I picked up this box of day trippers by the sun care brand Sunbum. I can't even begin to tell you how perfect these were. I wanted sunscreen, of course, since my birthday party is outside on a beach all day and the sun bum day tripper also came with a bottle of cool down after being in the sun and a coconut flavored lip chat the best part about the bags for me i think is the size it's perfect for what i want to do you're probably wondering well what is it that you want to do okay now to fill up the bag some more i drove to a nearby pharmacy aka a botica in aruba i started thinking what the girls would want after a day of celebrating a face mask to rejuvenate your skin might be helpful. Rehydration tablets, I think are a must nowadays. Um, when you're drinking and when you're getting older, I do particularly like this brand. And last but not least, Advil, in case anyone gets a headache the next day after a little too much wine. And one of the most special things I did was probably these custom cookies. I selected great photos of me and each of my girlfriends coming to the party, and I got an edible image printed on top of each of the butter cookies. Next, I also wrote a nice message to everyone on my personalized stationery. I already had these um, in the office, so I didn't have to go out and get them. There you have it, a party favor for a celebration on the beach. I had so much fun putting these together. I was so excited um, to give these to them. I'm not usually a crafty person, but I've been seeing really neat things being done on TikTok um, with party favors, so I was inspired. I kept my birthday celebration really small though, so it's easier to be able to do something special for everyone. I handed the bags to my friends on the way to the Palm Island. My girlfriends were ecstatic, beyond ecstatic, I think, with this little gift. The cookies and cards were the crowd favorites. Catch part two of the fun birthday celebration. A day with the flamingos on De Palm Island for a birthday celebration. Let's back up a bit. Before going, we need to grab some essentials. Gotta get some good rosé to De Palm Island for my girls and I, so I stopped by the best place for rosé and that's H&H &H Fine Wines and Spirits. Bobby here helped me out and he is the best. Look at this pretty packaging. I highly recommend all of these, The Rock by Whispering Angel, The Original Whispering Angel, and The Beach Rosé. Next up, it's time to go. To encourage responsible driving, transportation was arranged with all guests. Here we are picking up the girls at each of their homes. We also had some fun on the way. My small group of girlfriends received a special beach day themed party favor with Sun Bum Sun Care products, which definitely came in handy that day. For the look at the party favors, head over to my TikTok account. The Palm Island has an open bar, of course, but we are keen on good rosé on a day of celebration like this. It was a sunny beach day with clear water, blue sky, beautiful flamingos, and good company. That's a wrap on 36.